All right, here we're going to spend some time talking about privilege levels. Privilege levels are a way for you to provide CLI or iOS access to only certain commands. So it'll be a little bit easier when we go through it to kind of understand. So there's 16 levels, 0 to 15. There are three default levels, 0, 1, and 15. A 0 being the lowest level, you likely haven't used it. There are five commands available, disable, enable, exit, help, and logout. Uh, the two you're probably likely most familiar with uh, for sure is the default level, which is the user exec level one. That's the one you'll enter by default when you get access. If you counsel into the device and you uh, hit enter and you get access to the device, you're in user exec level. And it has a certain set of commands, but it doesn't have all the commands. And then we jump to our last default level and our last level overall. That's level 15, just privilege exec, and it has access to all the commands. Likely somewhere, in order to secure your devices, there's likely a middle ground somewhere in there for you. Where it's like, okay, so I have uh, senior engineers and junior engineers or, or whatever you want to call them, and you know, I have just maybe one or two folks that have access to level 15, but maybe I have, you know, 10 folks that are able to get on these devices to kind of help us troubleshoot them, figure out what's going on. And I have different levels for them, and they get a different set of commands. And we can do that via custom levels. Our custom levels can be configured. Those are levels 2 to 14. We'll go from level 1 to level 15, so we'll go to, from our user exec level to our privileged exec level by just simply entering the command enable. So by default, when I type enable, and hopefully then I also have to type a password or something, uh, I can get into level 15, which just has all the commands available to me. If I want to enter into a custom level, I'm going to do that by issuing the command enable in the level I want to get into. So I do enable 3, for example, to get into level 3. One of the, the important things to understand about privilege levels is a higher number has greater privilege, but that those higher numbers or higher levels inherit all the commands of a lower level. Okay, so just by default, level 1 has all the commands that were already configured in level 0. Level 15 has all the commands, but it has all the commands in 1 and 0, and then all the additional commands. So if I go ahead and I configure this level 3, and let's say we take this level 3 and uh, we configure level 3 and we add debug as a command to it. Okay, so this level 3 privilege level that I've configured now has all the commands available to it at level 1 and 0, or specifically 1 because 1 already inherits everything at 0, plus the debug command. Now let's say I say, well, you know what, you know I want the folks at level 3 to be able to debug things and see the commands at level 1 that are available to them. But then you know what's not available at level 1 and isn't at level 3 because I didn't add it is show tech support. So let's say I want to add the command show tech support. So I create a new level, level 4, and I add the show tech support command. So now what happens? What commands are available to level 4? Everything in level 1 plus debug plus show tech support. So just to illustrate that a higher level privilege inherits all the commands from the lower levels. Now let's go ahead and see what it looks like to, to configure this. It's not really all that difficult. The first thing we want to do is configure the privilege level. So we're going to do the keyword privilege, mode. There are a lot of modes. We'll use exec. We're dealing with exec here, so we'll do privilege exec, the keyword level whatever level it is you're going to configure and the command you're going to add to that level. Now we can also configure authentication. We could do uh, either or both of these options. So I can do just an enable secret for the level. So I can do enable secret level, uh, whatever the level is, and then the password. I can also authenticate users into a particular level based upon username and password. So username, the name of the user, privilege, the level they should be authenticated into, secret, and then the password. So if I have a user named admin, oh, 
if I have my username admin with a password of test, whoops, let's, let me get rid of this second. That, that wasn't the right spot for that. Let's try this again. So if I have my username of admin, okay, at level three, this password is test. When a user comes in from, uh, and then what I could say is I could say on the council line, I could say login local. So when they come to log into that first user, they'll be prompted for a username. They'll enter admin, and then they'll be prompted for the password and you enter test. And then if I do a show privilege here, I'll show you when we do it, we're gonna see that they're automatically at level three. Um, so we could say everyone that has the password for this uh, enable at this particular level can get in at that level, or we can assign a particular username and password. We can assign a level to a particular username. So let's go ahead and look at this on the device itself while you look at it on a router. All right, so at this point, the only thing I've configured on this router is a host name of R1. Let's first verify that. So, so basically, I have a router. I'm connected physically through the console connection. The only thing configured on is a host name because all we're going to do is privilege levels right now. So let's first verify that, yes, in fact, level one or user exec is the default level you come into. So let's do a show privilege, and our current privilege level is one. Now, I, you're not going to use very often. I can't think of a great time to use level zero. I'm sure some of you folks out there can. But let's demonstrate that, in fact, a level zero does exist. So we do enable zero and hit enter. Now, there are no show commands available at level zero. Remember, we said there were only five commands available at level zero. So the best way to verify that, in fact, maybe you're at level zero is hitting a question mark, and I see my five commands. <coughs> now let's go ahead and get out of level zero. This should bring us back into level one, and it does. Let's hit a question mark on level one. I'm not gonna go through all the commands. The only thing I want you to notice is one of them that I talked about earlier, which was debug. Debug doesn't exist as an option in level one. So let's say you're going on vacation and you wanna give uh, one of your junior engineers or however their title is, access to be able to debug something. Certain things, maybe everything, you decide. But you want them to be able to debug so that if something bad happens, uh, they can work with the rest of the team or they can give you a call and say, hey, you know, I ran debug. This is the output I'm seeing. And, and there are a ton of other commands you could choose. This is really just for demonstration. So debug, in fact, doesn't exist at level one, so let's add it. Let's create a custom privilege level and add it to level two. Now the first thing I need to do is, I said, the only thing that's configured in here is a host name. So let's create an privilege level 15 password. So if we type enable right now, where does it go by default? Privilege level 15, right? Privilege exec level, which has access to all the iOS commands. So if I do a show privilege, I'm at level 15. Let's go ahead from here, we can configure. So let's enable, let's create it just a simple enable secret password. A VN pass, yeah. Let's go ahead and do that. All right. Now I'm going to stay in configuration mode because what I want to do is go ahead and configure privilege level two. So we use the keyword privilege. The mode for our purposes is exec. There are multiple modes. We're dealing with just exec mode right now. So we'll do privilege exec level. The level is two that we're going to create. And the command that we're going to add to level two is debug. Let's go ahead and give privilege level two a password. So let's do an enable secret, just a simple enable secret. Level two, password will just be test. So it's enable secret level, the number of the level, and then the password. All right, let's exit out of here. Let's do an enable two, so we get into privilege level two. Now, because we're going from level 15 to level two, we're not gonna need this password. Let's first do a question mark here to see that yes, in fact, debug is now an option. Now you only are going to get a subset of the debug commands. You're not gonna get all of them. So if I do a debug question mark, I'm just getting a subset of all the options. Um, 
So we have to add, let's say I, I'm running EIGRP on my network and I want them to be able to debug EIGRP, specifically debug EIGRP packets. We're going to have to add that as a command, as an option. Here's the other thing though I want you to notice. Let's go back to this. So we have our debug command and it says see also undebug. If I can debug something, I need to be able to turn that debugging off. So let's space bar through, space through, wow, and see that QRSTU, we have no undebug. So if I'm going to give privilege level 2 the option to debug, I also specifically have to give them the option to undebug. So if I, let's exit back first. Uh, let's first go into user mode, enable 2. Let's notice if I'm in user, so if I'm in level 1 wanting to go to 2, then I need to enter in my password. And I do a show privilege. Okay. Now, my privilege level 2 user wants to be able to configure something. First of all, not an option. Uh, let's say they know that enable by default brings us into 15, level 15. Sure, but assuming you gave them access to only level 2, I would then assume or like to think that you didn't give them the password for level 15, so they get all of them wrong. So that as an administrator, or a senior engineer, or whatever you want to call me, or you, we need to now go give privilege level 2 before we go on our vacation. They need the ability, the ability to shut off debugging. A couple things they need. When we did debug question mark, there was no debug EIGRP as our default options. So I want to them to be able to debug EIGRP packets. Also, there was no undebug. So let's first add undebug. So we'll go into config T because we are the administrator, right? We've been senior administrator, how what, however your title is. And let's do privilege exec level 2. And the command is undebug. And let's go fix it back. Let's do enable 2. Remember, because I'm going from 15 to 2, I don't have to put in the password. Now, I demonstrated up here. No, I didn't. It was way up there. <laughs> Sorry. I demonstrated up here that someone at level 2 doesn't have the password to get to level 15, so they can't get in. Now, from this point forward in the video, just for ease, uh, for efficiency, I'm just going to go, because you and I both know what the privilege level 15 or enable password is. Uh, from this point on, I'm just going to start going into 15. Now, you know that a level 2 user could not do that because they would not have the password. We do, and for the purposes of demonstration, we're just going to go back and forth more efficiently. So enable 2, the first thing I want to do is see that, okay, was debug added? Or undebug, sorry. So if we hit a question mark, find our command. I suppose we could have done U question mark, huh? That would have narrowed it down quite a bit for us. And then we, in fact, find the undebug command. We do an on debug question mark. We see what are the subset of commands available to undebug right now, and they were the same exact commands available to debug. Let's go into privilege level 15. Remember, we wouldn't actually be able to do this if we were a level user, level two user. Let's do config t. Now we're going to add our debugging of EIGRP packets. Privilege exec level 2, debug EIGRP packets. Now let's go into privilege level 2, and let's do debug, question mark, and we see EIGRP now that we didn't see before. Let's also go EIGRP, debug EIGRP, question mark, and notice we only have packets as an option. If, if you've ever worked at privilege level 15, you know that privilege level 15 has multiple options for debug EIGRP, but because we were custom privilege levels is very specific to the commands that you add to it, we only get debug EIGRP packets. Let's do one other thing. Let's go undebug question mark. Notice that when I added EIGRP to the debug options, 
it automatically got added to the undebug options. So I undebug EIGRP, we'll spell it right first, EIGRP, and now I can undebug EIGRP packets. So I did debug, I'm only given a certain subset of commands. I've said, hey, wait a minute, I need my admin to be able to debug and undebug, and they get the same subset of commands. So then I add EIGRP, I add debugging EIGRP packets. That EIGRP packets is automatically added to an option for undebug at this point. Okay, so the last thing I want to do is demonstrate local username and password coming into the console for a particular level. So let's remember we only would do this, we only do this in a testing or a lab environment where we would have both sets of passwords. It would be silly to have levels and then have everybody have the level 15 password. So we're going to go ahead and configure a local username and password that links to level 2 so that when a user logs in with that username and password, so now instead of just having a password, you have to come into privilege level 1 and enter a username and password that will give you access to privilege level 2. So let's do uh, username admin1 privilege 2 level, oops, sorry, privilege to secret, and that's password test again, okay? So now what we have to do is line con zero to tell it to log in local. Log in local isn't part of the username and password. Likely we would already have some sort of username and password. We'd have a login local or we'd have AAA authentication to a radius or attack X server. In this case, so this command is actually separate from this command, assuming you already have this configured. Otherwise, if you have them log into the console, they'll log in as we, as we have been up to this point. So login local says use the local database or that any local username and passwords that we have configured to log into console. Let's get out of here. And now, when I exit all the way back out and I want to come into the console directly, I have to provide a username. And that, the only one I have configured right now is the one that's for privilege level two. So I do admin one. Enter, and then the password of test. And now notice, we don't see the usual user exec prompt right now. So that should indicate to me that I am beyond one for sure. So if I do a show privilege, it's level two. So this user admin one that we linked earlier automatically comes into privilege level two. That's what they have access to. So that's it. If you have any questions, let me know.